Hi everybody. I've recently made some posts where I was talking about different sizes of beehive frames. Langstroth, Layens, Lazutin, and some of my friends said they were kind of confused by that. So I'm going to make this video to give a quick overview of some of those different frames, do a little show and tell, and talk about the benefits of the different sizes of frames and why beekeepers use them. I'm standing behind this hive that I am currently building. Uh, this is a converter hive. Uh, it's my own design and it's built so that I can convert between Langstroth frames and Layens frames. In other words, move bees that are on one size frames to another size with the frames horizontal to each other. The bees can move directly from one to another and without having to make any sort of adapters to fit the frames into or cut the frames apart. So it's still in progress. Hopefully it'll work. I have a nucleus colony that I'm going to uh, use to test this, but that'll be another video. For now, it makes a good platform to be able to demonstrate these different frame sizes. So I'll start with what's most common in the U.S., and that is the Langstroth frame. And I have here some Langstroth deep frames, meaning, let me find one that looks nice. There we go. Um, it's about 9 inches deep and about 19 inches wide. This is typical of what you, a beekeeper would use for their brood, or in other words, where the queen would lay the eggs and the larva would develop and develop into the pupa and the, and the bees would emerge. So in other words, where the bees grow. So you would have a box that would hold these, usually holding about 10 of them side by side in this more or less squarish box, uh, just slightly taller than this. And if you've ever seen beehives around the U.S., you most likely have seen these stacked boxes. Because you use one box of the deeps for brood, and then if you need more brood, you may stack another deep box on top of that. And then for honey production, you would stack shallow boxes on top of that. The shallow frames are about half the depth. And you stack up as many shallows as you need in order for the bees to store honey up. And that's what you use to harvest. Now, these are extremely common in the U.S. Lots of beekeepers are extremely successful with these. But there are a couple downsides that people run into. One is that... Because you handle frames by the box, typically a box of 10 frames or maybe 8 frames, when you go to harvest honey, you're lifting off these boxes of honey. And even though you use the shallow frames to harvest that honey, those boxes still get heavy when those frames are all full of honey. And a lot of beekeepers, once they get older or start having joint problems and have trouble lifting those boxes, that's when they decide to get out of beekeeping. Even if they still love it, it just physically becomes a problem. The other issue is that the brood boxes are all the way at the bottom of those stacks that you see. So in order to inspect that box to check on the health of the bees, see how well they're producing brood, you have to lift off all of the boxes that are on top and open up the hive. Another problem with that is that the Langstroth frames do not touch along the length of the frames. There is a gap along the, the center, uh, along the top of the frames. And that's by design so that the bees can move vertically from the deep boxes up into the shallows and up through the stack and the bees can easily migrate up through there. Another issue that the length trough frames have is how bees overwinter. So where I first learned of it was in the book Keeping Bees with a Smile by Fedor Lazutin and he describes really well how bees overwinter. What the bees do is they will create a cluster so you have several frames together the bees will basically form a sphere of bees that will go you know, across the brood frames, and they will go inside of the cells as, and, you know, make that sphere as compact as possible in order to conserve their heat during the cold temperatures of winter. Now, for food during winter, that, that cluster will migrate up on those frames, and the bees will typically store some honey across the top of the frames, so they go up and they eat that honey. Now, the problem with the Langstroth is that it's not uncommon that when the bees get to the top of this frame, they may have more honey at the top. But because there's a gap, slight gap in between frames, that cluster may not go across that gap. And I've seen videos where this has happened, uh, that the bees will, the cluster will be all piled up at the top of a frame and they will all starve out because they have no more resources to eat. During the winter, they don't break cluster. They won't go across frames. So I may have 10 frames and the cluster's here and I may have honey right here. The bees won't go across there to find that honey. So if they don't go over here to find the honey and they won't cross that gap to find the honey, they end up starving. So like I said, I have seen videos of uh, you know several beekeepers that were inspecting their hives in spring and found their cluster piled up at the top of a brood frame 
and starved out even though they had honey right across the top. So in reading that book, Keeping Bees with a Smile, uh, Fedora Lazutin uh, advocates using a horizontal hive rather than having these stacked boxes, using a horizontal hive with extra deep frame. The purpose of the horizontal hive, number one, it means you don't have to be lifting heavy boxes. You handle the frames individually, and so that takes less stress on a person. A person can continue beekeeping longer into their life, even you know if they start to have joint troubles or anything. And I don't have particular joint troubles, but I don't like lifting heavy boxes, so the, the horizontal hive appealed to me. The second thing about what Lazutin promoted with an extra deep frame is to have space for the bees to overwinter successfully. This is an extra deep frame. You can see this foundation is the size of the foundation from a Langstroth frame. And you see it uses two full sheets. The frame is the same width as, or the same length as the Langstroth frame, but twice as deep. So that cluster of bees as they move up, they have plenty of space to move and consume resources through winter. So there's not the problem with overwintering. A benefit of Langstroth frames is that they're easily, the Langstroth hive, I'm going to back up just a second, the benefit of the Langstroth hive is that they're easily portable. The boxes are made, sized to fit four to a pallet. So they're very popular with commercial beekeepers. They load up their pallets, they truck them to different places in the country where they can do pollination contracts. But that also means for overwintering, it makes it easy for these beekeepers to truck their hives to Texas or someplace in the south where the bees don't have the overwintering problems. For a backyard beekeeper, that's not, that's not always practical. So, back to our deep frames um, where you can overwinter your bees locally and you don't have to worry about them trying to bridge a gap or anything because they have all that frame to go through. Now, just as an example, uh, is here's, here's another type of Lazutin frame. This one obviously has no foundation in it because it's a foundationless frame. You just let the bees build out their foundation naturally. It has a dowel rod to provide some support so you don't have uh, the chances of that, that, uh, that comb breaking off. Um, the foundation just provides a little more structure, maybe a little more control in how the bees build out that, uh, that comb. So after I read the book, and this was last fall, I decided, well, this makes sense. I want my bees to be able to overwinter successfully. I don't want to have to lift those heavy boxes. So I built a large hive, not this one, but uh, another hive for these Lazutin frames. Now, one problem with the Lazutin is that if the bees fill this with honey, there is no commercially available extractor to take that honey out of this frame. In other words, you d not that an extractor that you can put these frames in and it will spin them to remove the honey. So really the only way to extract the honey is to uncap it, meaning you cut off the wax caps the bees put on the honey and just let it drip out, or on the frameless, or the foundationless, you can just cut the comb out, crush it, and let the honey drain out. So that is one problem, is extraction. And so that's why when I built my large hive, I built it to be a double deep, meaning it can hold the Lazutin frames, and my intent is that the bees will you know, give them these frames to put their brood on and to overwinter. But it would also hold, as a double deep, it would hold two Langstroth frames, one above the other, and we could use that for honey production because you can get an extractor that will hold these deep frames uh, pretty easily. So that was my plan. And then last September, I went to a conference by uh, Dr. Leo Shirashkin. And I had just finished my big hive, and it was actually based on plans that are on his website. So I contacted Dr. Leo and said, hey, I just built this hive, described it to him. I was pretty proud of it. I said, can I bring this to the, uh, the conference and get your input on it? Because I had made some of my own modifications. And he said, sure, bring the hive, but by the end of the conference, you may decide that you want to go with lay-ins instead. And I'm like, well, I don't want to go with lay-ins. I want to use an extractor that is commercially available. I've already been convinced of the benefit of the large large frame for overwintering and so on. So I went to the conference and was introduced to the Layens frame. Now the Layens frame is another deep frame, obviously not as big as the Lazutin frame. And uh, so it's narrower, it doesn't have the standard width of the Langstroth um, dimensions doesn't have quite the depth of the Lazutin. And uh, 
But talking to Dr. Leo about it, he said the Lazutin frame is necessary for Fedor Lazutin to overwinter his bees because he lives in northern Russia where they have harsh, long winters. So this large frame gives them plenty of space. Being in a northern climate, they have longer days and the bees have plenty of space to store up resources, nectar and pollen, during those long days of summer. And then when they get the long, harsh winter, they've got lots of space and lots of resources for overwintering. And here in Missouri, where we live, where I live and Dr. Leo lives, he says that size of frame is not necessary for our winters. So I watched him work the Layens frame. Now with the Layens hive, you have just one size of frame, whereas in my hive, I would have had two, the double deep Langstroth along with the Lazutin. So you have one size frame, that key, that's in itself is a simplicity. The frames touch along the top, which is different from the Langstroth and the Lazutin, although you could make Lazutin touch along the top, and that is specific to a horizontal hive. So when you put these frames in, um, the tops touch and it creates a ceiling over top of the bees. So when you inspect that hive, you open the lid, you're not opening the whole colony. You're not disturbing the whole colony as you would with frames that have a gap in between. And so as you inspect, you're only exposing the bees on the frames that you're moving and looking at. And as you move frames, you can slide them together. So as I close them up over here, now these bees are no longer disturbed. They go about their business while I'm inspecting the, the colony over here. And uh, so it's much less disturbing to the bees. It provides that vertical space for overwintering in our climate. And uh, for, for overwintering, one thing as I follow a lot of pages and watch people who use length stroth hives uh, over winter, they're always talking about how much honey do I leave? How, you know, how do I feed the bees preparing for winter? With the lay-ins, as Dr. Leo demonstrated it, the practice for preparing for winter is to find your brood frames, find the beginning and end of where the bees have their brood, and take a full frame of honey, put it on each end. Now, like I said, for winter, they won't use that honey on the ends. They only move their cluster vertically. But when spring comes and the weather warms up, they will move out looking for that honey before the flowers have started to bloom and there's nectar available, they'll start using that honey to feed their colony in preparation for spring and for the queen to start laying eggs. So brood frames, a frame of honey on each end, and Dr. Leo puts a pillow on top um, for heat and you know to help help them regulate their heat over the winter, and that's it. Very simple to winterize. So you know it's a simple, simple design, it's horizontal, no heavy boxes to lift, disturbs the bees, bees very little. It has that space for overwintering and, uh, and easy setup for overwintering. So it was a design that I really liked, uh, made things very simple. I hope this is helpful in explaining the different frame sizes and why people use them. So if you have any questions, uh, please post those as a comment. I'll be glad to help as, as uh, well as I can. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you next time.